Hi everyone, I'm Gonzalo Aguirre. I'm happy to be here sharing our story on how we managed to make our React Native builds much faster. I'm the CTO and co-founder at Underscope, a company focused on mobile app development. We use React Native for all our apps since 2015. In 2017, we found Bitrise and it's now our go-to for mobile CI CD services. Let's face it, mobile builds are slow, at least for someone coming from web development like me. This talk is about how we took advantage of React Native's architecture to build much faster. But before going on to technical aspects, I'd like to address why I think slow builds are a problem. Developing mobile apps is complex. Teams are often composed of many roles. Designers, developers, testers, product owners, you name it. It usually requires constant feedback between teammates. Keeping this feedback loop short is essential for optimal teamwork. Slow builds affect in a negative way to the team experience, as I like to call it. We need builds to be fast so teams can iterate faster. Make it worse, builds are not evenly distributed during the sprint. I have seen this bottleneck at the end of the sprint so many times, and of course, this is expected. Every team is polishing what they will present at the demo. Okay, now we know why slow builds are a problem. Next question we could ask ourselves is, why are React Native builds so slow in my CI? React Native is well known for its great developer experience, especially because developers can see their changes reflected on the app as they call. It's super fast. But then the build takes forever on my CI. Why? Well, usually in your CI, you are doing everything from scratch, cloning your repo, installing the project dependencies, and for React Native, this means both JS and native dependencies, and finally building your app, among other minor tasks like notifying to Slack when the build is ready or whatever. The difference between developing a React Native app and building it in my CI is huge. It's fair to ask, what makes React Native dev cycle that fast? React Native's ability to show changes in your app as soon as you save a file is possible thanks to its architecture. So let's take a look under the hood. Here we have a simplified explanation of how React Native works. Of course, many things are missing in this diagram, but it's enough to understand what's coming later in this talk. A React Native app is actually a native app, meaning that it renders native UI components and has a built-in JavaScript core, which is in charge of executing your JS code which is most of your code base, probably more than 95% or so. All your JS files are bundled in one big file, known as the JS bundle. When developers are coding their app, as soon as they change a file, this bundle is regenerated and then fetched by the app, which executes this new bundle. This happens almost immediately, so you can see your changes as you code. This is known as fast refresh, and it's key for the great DX React Native provides. It's very important to know this, that this is only possible thanks to mainly two things. First, the JS bundler Metro is super fast. And second, that we are avoiding the native code recompiling. If we make a change in the native code, we lose this. We need to go over the entire build process, which is much slower. We could say fast refresh only works for JavaScript changes. What about React Native apps beyond the mode? For apps in release mode, instead of fetching the JS bundle in runtime, this bundle is generated as part of the build process and included in your app package. So the JS core can consume it directly from there. We could say the JS bundle is fixed. It doesn't change over time like it does on dev mode. So this is basically one of the biggest differences between a React Native app in development versus release mode. 
For dev mode, the JS bundle is generated in runtime. For release mode, it's generated in build time. We could see in the previous slides, React Native involves JS code that needs to be bundled at some point. This adds a build phase to the normal native build process. We can think of React Native builds in three different phases. First, it compiles the native code. Then it bundles the JS code and finally signs the resulting artifact. Back in 2019, we were working for a new fintech to set up the foundation for their mobile application and dev team. They were committed to create the best user experience, and in order to do so, they needed to constantly iterate each new feature. As the app became more complex, the build time started to rise, reaching a point it wasn't acceptable anymore. I remember being asked multiple times, why are builds so slow? How can we make them faster? And always as answering, forget it, mobile builds are slow. We had to disable the automatic builds on every push and start triggering them manually instead. The teamwork was being affected and we weren't happy. So we started looking for solutions. We found some alternatives that seemed like a possible solution for our problem. Expo looked great, but wasn't an option for us due to technical limitations they had back then. We couldn't use custom native code like third-party modules that were not part of Expo SDK. We also considered code push, but it's more intended for hotfixes on production and our biggest pain was on previous stages when teams were iterating a feature on a daily basis. Unfortunately, none of this solved our problem. We decided to go deeper to better understand how to fix this. When we analyzed the build process, we noticed that compiling the native code took nearly 80% of the whole time. At this point, it was clear that we needed to focus on this build phase if we wanted to speed up our builds. So we thought, what if we could do the same React Native does and avoid compiling the native code when possible? At the end of the day, most of our changes were JS only, so we would benefit from it most of the times. It would be great if we could just replace the JS bundle instead of doing the whole thing. It turns out mobile apps artifacts are actually zip files. They just have a different extensions, APK for Android and IPA for iOS. Classic React Native App package contains the compiled native code, some metadata, and many assets, including the before mentioned JS bundle. We had to give it a try. We unzipped the app artifact, replaced the JS bundle, zipped it back, and it didn't work. But the good news is that it wasn't working because the signature had become invalid. Do you remember that signing phase? So we tried resigning the app after the changes, and this time it worked. The app came back to life again, and this was the moment we knew it was possible. Avoiding the native code compilation was no longer a dream. However, we still had a problem. This technique wouldn't work if something in native code changed, because we were skipping the native code compilation. The app would not reflect those changes and it could even crash. We needed a way to know whether we could apply this optimization or not for every new build. We were super excited with the discovery and we had a plan. We knew that injecting a new bundle was possible. We just needed a script for it, which would unzip the artifact, inject the new bundle into the package zip the package back and resign it. Additionally, we needed a way to figure out whether this technique could be applied or not for each new build. And finally, we also needed storage for our artifacts so we could reuse them later. We solved the problem of knowing whether we could apply our optimization or not by hashing. For each new build, we have a hash that works as a native code fingerprint, 
and we use it as a key for our artifact cache. We take the project native code, native dependencies, environment variables, among other things, and we calculate a hash from them. For any given commit, we can know if there is a native compatible version in our cache using this hash. We put the pieces together in one workflow. It had two branches, one with the normal build process and the other with the optimized one. For each new trigger build, we calculate the previous dimension hash and then use it as the key when looking for entries in our cache. If there is not, then we go through the normal build process and once the build is done, we upload the resulting artifact in our build cache using the hash as the key, of course. If we do find a compatible artifact, then we go through the optimized path. We fetch the artifact, we create the new JS bundle, we inject it into the fetched artifact, and finally resign the app package. Both flows result in a new version of the app. Of course, one of them is much faster. Fortunately, native changes are unusual in React Native so the optimized flow would be used more frequently. The results were great. Simply applying this optimization, our build were three times faster than normal ones. Over time, we added some other optimizations that make builds even faster. These are metrics for a real project today. On average, we got five times faster builds on Android and 3.5 times faster for iOS. Of course, this radio is not guaranteed. It depends on many factors, from how many native dependencies your project has to the machines your builds are running on. We have seen savings from 2.5x to 5 or even 6x. Initially, it was just a bunch of script put together in our CI workflow for one specific project. After seeing the results, we started using this optimization in more projects. But as expected, it was evolving. We added cache for node modules and metro, as well as supporting many edge cases. We all know copy pasting is never a good idea. So we turned it into a tool first as a CLI, which was then wrapped as a bitrise step. Creating a bitrise step has some benefits that could be not so obvious at first glance, but deserves to be mentioned. First, you get a nice UI for free that people can use to set parameter values. You can also document each parameter, which is really helpful for people not familiar with the tool. Finally, you can set default values for your parameters based on bitrace environment variables, which is great. In our case, we use all the variables coming from the code signing section. This means we get the Android key store along with the key alias and password and the iOS certificate and provisioning profile. Having good defaults makes our tool easier to use. This is a workflow for iOS using our build tool. There you can see we only provide two parameters because everything else is just using default values. For a simple project, you probably don't need to specify anything, making the setup trivial when starting a new app. We are not just saving time, but also making the setup super easy for anyone on our team, no matter their experience level. Okay. Let's recap on the key takeaways of this talk. First, we saw why fast fields are crucial for teamwork. We always talk about user experience, developer experience, but not that much about the team experience. If we want to be more productive, we need short feedback loops between teammates. And to do so, we need to build faster. Then we went deep on React Native technical aspects to understand how we could take advantage of its architecture to optimize our builds. Speed up React Native builds is not simple, but it's possible, and the results make it worth it. Finally, we talk about the benefits of creating your own bitrace step for recurring tasks. 
They are not that obvious at first glance, but you will thank yourself in the future. That's it. Thanks for viewing this talk. I hope you like it. I would love to have feedback from you, so feel free to contact me on Twitter or any other social media. Bye!